isn't a soul on this planet that doesn't love the anamorphic look, but actually I can probably think of two people, but point still stands. It's beautiful. Yo, Darius Bird here. I've been getting into shooting me some anamorphic lately. I've tried various filters. They've kind of worked to varying degrees. I wasn't entirely happy with what I was getting out of them. Recently, Siri sent me their 50 millimeter anamorphic prime. I got to take it for like a spin over this last couple of weeks and do some tests. In the past, they've made tripods, they've made budget wide angle lenses and anamorphic lenses for cell phones, and now they are looking to disrupt the anamorphic prime lens market. Considering all of that, this is a, it's a very interesting move. Let's take a look at this bad boy. Look at that front element, just freakish goodness. The build is nice, it feels solid. The lens takes a 67 millimeter filter thread. We got the focus ring in the front. It has a decent focus throw. The aperture ring is in the back near the rear element. This lens is completely manual. You can't perform any automatic functions in camera with this little guy. Max aperture is f1.8. The minimum focusing distance is about two and a half feet. Sharpness test. This would be the world's most sophisticated sharpness test, only I lost my focus chart. So we're just gonna have to do this one backwards. At 1.8, it's fairly soft, not very usable. We got some vignetting. No surprises here. At f2, a little sharper. Still a little vignetting going on though. f2.8 is better. f4 and f5.6 are the sweet spot. f8 through f16, we're still rocking. This is a complete anamorphic lens for about $700. That's a steal. These lenses don't start shipping until February 2020. I'm hearing that the super early bird pricing on this lens is $549. Early bird pricing is $599 and the retail is going to be $699. What do anamorphic lenses do? If you're not familiar with anamorphics, quick recap. These lenses allow you to get a wider aspect ratio. The whole widescreen deal started because the studios wanted to find a way to entice audiences back into the movie theater when television was taken off. That's the abridged version. There's plenty of other videos that cover the birth of widescreen. You know how we throw the letterboxes on the footage to like crop the top and the bottom to get that really, really nice widescreen look? Well, with a real anamorphic lens, you don't have to do that. In layman terms, you get to see more stuff on either side of the image. If you look at that front element, it looks kind of funny, right? Because it squeezes the image horizontally, allowing you to record a wider field of view onto that sensor. Now your image is gonna look funny right out of the camera because you're gonna have to de-squeeze it in post. Anamorphics come in different squeeze factors. Some are gonna compress your image horizontally by a factor of two, meaning that you would see twice the amount of stuff on either side than you would with a normal lens. That would be a 2x anamorphic. This lens compresses the image by a factor of 1.33x, which means you get about 30% more field of view on either side of the image. When I shoot anamorphic on my GH4, which has a 16 by 9 sensor, I end up getting a 235 aspect ratio. It actually gives me 2364444 or something, but we're just gonna say 235. Something to keep in mind, you will need some way to de-squeeze the image while you're shooting because it's a little distracting to stare at like a squished image when you're trying to pull focus. You're definitely gonna wanna use a monitor or something with a de-squeeze function. These lenses come in a few different mounts. They've got an X mount, an E mount. I've got the micro four thirds mount because GH4, G7. The anamorphic look. Anamorphics have certain characteristics that create that like iconic anamorphic look and it goes beyond just seeing more stuff. With a traditional spherical lens, the out of focus areas have the typical round bokeh. The lens renders the image fairly realistically. With an anamorphic lens, you get the distinct oval shaped waterfall bokeh. This isn't just the highlights, it's, it's everything. Everything that's out of focus gets that stretched quality. It gives your images a more impressionistic art full look rather than the true to life realistic look that you'd get from a spherical lens. The stronger the squeeze factor on the lens, the more of that stretchy out of focus bokeh effect you get. And then there's also the characteristic horizontal lens flare that stretches across the image. The widest I'd go is F4, maybe F3.2, like a third of a stop. Any wider than that and it's crazy soft. But the same is true for most lenses. You never wanna shoot wide open. You wanna stop down at least one or two stops to get the best performance. All things considered for the price, this is actually a really good lens, and if you're a beginner trying to get into anamorphic photography without spending a ton of money, this is a really good option. This is just their first lens. Uh, I think they're planning to make more of them. I would love to see a set of these because if I'm going on a film shoot or shooting a short, I, I, I want more than one focal length, so at least three or four. I am really digging this lens. I've got a couple of YouTube videos coming up that I've shot with it. Uh, the short film Stay Pretty is coming up. I've shot a lot of that short film with this lens. Look out for that. As usual, thank Thank you all so much for watching. Keep hustling and deep it out. Hello, 大家好，我是十月光学的 CEO 李杰。近年来，八法以及微大的广泛使用，使得拍摄第一眼故事不再有门槛，一枚镜头就是为此而生。
，我们经过了与超百名国内外视频创作者进行交流，最终确认生产一款高品质、轻便的微大快眼帽变形镜头。现在，我带大家来到了思悦的生产、装配、测试车间，就是我们的光学镜头装配线。就是我们的 P 线检测仪，用于我们镜头全组的 P 线检测。这、就是我们的 MTF 检测仪，用于我们光学镜头的各项光学成像指标的检测。Welcome to Surrey, USA. In 2020, Surrey Optical will be providing a high-quality mirrorless camera anamorphic lens to consumers. We wish to thank our followers and supporters, and are excited for our future journey with you.